the last day of the 2015 Mustang GT. Uh, I'm trading it in later today towards a new Focus, which sounds like a complete, complete 180 from where I'm at with this. Um, but some of the incentives are really good on the Focuses right now. Is there's there's zero percent interest for 72 months, and uh, I'm just looking to save some money. I'm actually planning on setting a fair amount of money aside now instead of paying you know pretty decent payments on this car. Um, I'm going to set about half of those payments aside and uh, start restoring my 69 Mustang, um, the Mach 1 that I have as a fastback, and. Uh, that way, you know, I still have a Mustang. It's not drivable right now. It's all pulled apart. It's a, basically a shell. I have all the parts strewn about the garage. I started that project several years ago and never really got too far on it from stripping it down to basically a bare shell. And I built a rotisserie for it. I built a, a cradle for the car so I could repair the rear frame rails before I could actually put it on the rotisserie. And, did a bunch of stuff with it, but I never got around to actually getting past much of that. Like I said, it's been a shell, um, and for the last couple of years I haven't really done much of anything with it. So it's uh, it's time to realize either I'm going to have to get rid of it because it's really not I'm not getting anywhere with it. And I don't I'm not getting any extra time to work on it. So I'm either going to get rid of it entirely or I'm going to restore it. So I figured, well, I love this car, but the money I'm putting into it, I'm spending on payments and everything, I could be putting into that car, restoring it, and that's going to retain its value. Yeah. I mean, this, this car is freaking amazing. I love it. There's lots of power here on tap. That wasn't even all the way to the floor or anything, but it's, it's freaking awesome. So I can't it's a tough decision to make. I mean, my heart is totally with this car, but I've also, I mean, I, I picked that 69 Mach 1 out of a barn many, many, yeah, quite a, well, about six years ago, and I, I, it just, you know, that was my original intention was to, to restore that car. That was going to be my Mustang, and then I got a 2002 GT, and then I started, and I still was working on the must, the other Mustang at that time, the 69. But then after that, I was like, well, what if I got a newer Mustang? That'd be kind of cool. So I got a 2010 GT, the 4.6 and the 5-speed as well. I've never had an automatic Mustang. I never will. But um, and, uh, and that was a great car. It was fun. I had that for a little while. And then I decided, well, what's the next logical step? Well, then I picked up an 07 Shelby GT500. Well, that was a badass car. Also, you know, obviously a 6-speed. And that was fast, but I missed some of the features that the 2010 had as far as like the sync system and all that. And uh, and it didn't really drive all that great. I mean, it, you accelerate going onto the highway and you're not mashing the pedal, but you're just accelerating at a pretty decent pace. And the slightest little bump you hit, that sucker will wheel hop all over the place. And I'm like, well, this is kind of dangerous. The thing is powerful. I mean, it would spin the tires left and right, but and it sounded great with that supercharger, oh man. I put a aftermarket exhaust on it to make it, you know, a little more audible, I guess. It's something you can actually hear. Um, and it was, it was amazing. But, I, again, I was like, well, it's not a whole lot more horsepower, a, little, a, a fair amount more torque than a 2015, but I'm like, I'd be paying about the same when it really comes down to it. I got a... a GT Premium 2015. I'm like, this, this is the way to go. So I ended up getting rid of that after a pretty short period of time and getting this 15 GT Premium that I have in this video. And, uh, you know, you have all the, the nice fancy features of the leather, heated and cooled seats. You have the sync system with a nice big display here. There's just a lot more technology. The independent rear suspension is amazing. And it's, you know, when you gas this car, you give it you know, a decent amount of throttle, there is all the grip in the world. I mean, you eventually you'll spin the tires, but if you're not trying to burn rubber, this car grips, man. I mean, it grips. It makes that Shelby look like a joke. Now, there's newer Shelbys, obviously, and that was an older one, so it only had, when I bought it, it had 3,000 miles on it. Um, 
so I mean there's there's a lot of age there it could have been the tires were shitty you know it could have been a lot of different things could have been something was you know a little worse for wear not not really from driving but from just sitting for so long who knows but uh, this car is so much better I think but uh, so yeah I'm, I'm getting rid of it this afternoon uh, it's uh, like 40 a.m. right now <laughs> going to work I work at 5 and so it's uh, it's time to get rid of it it kind of sucks I've had it a little over a year so at least I had it for a length of time I really kind of toy with the idea of just saying forget it I'm just gonna keep it and live with it and I'll just buy a beater for for winter again but that's the other thing it's like you know if I buy a beater car yeah it's a thousand fifteen hundred maybe two grand but if the thing all of a sudden has some issues during the winter where now all of a sudden, you know, brake line went out or this, that, and the other thing happens, and I got to stick a bunch of money and maintenance into it right away, well, that kind of defeats the purpose, you know, of money that I'd be saving. I wouldn't be saving any money at that rate because I'm still paying on this car. And then uh, I got a, you know, a beater that I got to maintain. But if I have a, a decent, like a little focus that is decent in the winter and, of course, in the summer, yeah, it's a boring car when it comes down to it. I'm not buying an ST because some of those STs run pretty damn close to what a GT would cost. And I'm like, well, in that case, why don't I just get another GT? Or just stick with the one that I have. But um, it's, a, it's a tough decision. It tugs at every heartstring you have when, you, when you're in love with a car, man. It's, and I'm sure a lot of you out there realize that. You understand it. And it's, you know you've all been in similar situations so it's like you know you understand it but yeah it's it's tough but time to get rid of it